Do you hear me? Anybody there? I don't know. Hello, Myra, how are you? You're, um, I just unmuted, hopefully it worked. It did work. Woohoo! I wrote back to Haley Bolton that she can go at the end of the meeting. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, I have to push button here. Okay, speak again. Yes. Oh, I hear you better now, okay. okay. <laughs> So um, and we are being recorded because I have the um, a Zoom set to automatically record, so I don't miss any uh, oh. minutes. Okay. It seems like the minutes are coming verbatim. Like they are, they are because, um, but they, that will this will this will be the last one. Um, so there was a senior volunteer. Uh, Susan Phillips, who has been working with the Crest Department for the last several months, and um, uh, she's been typing the minutes. And even though I sort of maybe tried to give her a little guidance about... Yeah, so the verbatim is... Right. First of all, most of the minutes are did not come through to me. It, it sort of stops in the middle of a mm -hmm. sentence from Guilford. Oh, so I don't know what happened to the rest of them. I assume they exist and didn't download right. Okay. I don't know. I'll check into that. With my computer, anything is possible these days. Yeah. <laughs> so. so did your com computer alert you that Philip has joined the... Yes. All right. Yes. When so Philip is the uh, new assistant DEI director, and when oh, the rest of the uh, board is here, I will introduce him um, to everyone. Okay. Great. I heard the announcement, and I thought I don't know a Philip. So <laughs> good. Well, I hello for him. now, but I'm sure I'll say hello again. He <laughs> doesn't live in this town. <laughs> anyway. Philip is not that usual a name anymore. You know what it means? Um, I I don't think I do know what it means. It apparently means lover of horses. 
Oh, right, right. I do remember hearing because that. my other my uh, friend Philip told me that years ago, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> lover <laughs> of horses. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but that's uh, what he said. I can't, I can't say that I, I mean, I don't, I can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of horses, so it's a good thing I'm not called Philip. <laughs> They're just too big. They scare me. It does seem like a name that is not used too often. I think I've only met possibly three or four other Phillips in my lifetime. So it's, it's not a name that I come across too much. Well, I think it's like in, uh, I mean, there are lots of Spanish Felipe's and mm -hmm. French Philippe's, but I don't hear too many American, like, you know, English Phillips. Maybe the British use it more. I don't know. I think they probably do. Yeah. Yeah. I did my homework. I did the walk around. Um, oh, I did not do my homework. Uh, oh, we'll see. I just did it an hour ago. <laughs> it's not <laughs> like I, you know, hey, it's like you did your homework right before you got to class. It was okay. <laughs> I'm glad I did it. Guilford's going to come, right? No, he's, he, um, oh. I don't think he was invited for this one. Oh, because we were going to talk about the Prey Street and everything. Uh, well, oh. you know what, I pro well, that's probably a mistake that I made because I did put it on the agenda, but I'm not sure that I sent him an invite. Oh, okay. So I will we'll have to do it in September because I suspect... Yeah, not everyone did their homework. <laughs> There's Pat. She didn't have homework to do. Hi, Pat. She must be muted, too. I think she's just logging in. Yeah, I don't know why they, the, the announcement always tells you that the person is there when the person isn't there yet. It doesn't make any sense to me. Does that mean that Philip is actually still in California? No, Philip is there. <laughs> no, I, I, have, I don't. I don't know if you've heard the announcement or not, Pat. But I am the new assistant director. I know. Of oh, yeah, I've heard, and I've been <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> oh, you actually know each other, so this yeah. is good. Yeah. Yes. Uh. So clearly, you're not new to Amherst. No, I, I'm not. He's new to me. And he's a wonderful chef, and maybe he'll feed us all sometime. Like, we can bring all the ingredients and wash up and clean up. <laughs> wonderful <afterwards>. chef. <laughs> this is something that I am not. Ditto. <laughs> sort of gave it up. I was a serviceable cook, and I gave <laughs> it up. When, my, when I no longer had to do it for five people, I don't cook all the time anymore. Good for you. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or not, but. <laughs> well, my son is coming this weekend to visit. Does he cook? Uh, yeah, he and his wife are both into f cooking and food. and. Well, good. So he told me, I've given you all these cookbooks and you don't do anything with them. So I've looked up two recipes and got yeah. the ingredients and he's going to help work with me on Saturday. So oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. And then when you learn how to make it, you can make it for all the rest of us. There's that Sarah. sounds good. It sounds good. Hello everyone. Hey Hello, Sarah. Sarah. Now, you friend. actually got here right after the announcement of you. All right. <laughs> well sometimes it says Sarah and Darren has joined the meeting and other people go, yeah, well, she's not there. But this time it was right away. I know. And I didn't have any problem and I'm far away from home. So it worked Ooh, well. Where are you? Uh, we are uh, at the Cape House. We have, is our second home. So, oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't know you had one. Where? On the Cape? Uh, in South Yarmouth. Nice. Yeah. 
very nice. Thank you. Probably cooler there, but it's not very warm here. So yeah, it's, okay. it's it's nice, very dry. Myra, one of uh, my daughter works at the common school, and the new principal knows she's across you. the street she's from me, right, right across the street, and she yes. said. Uh, she told Yeshim that Myra Ross brought us a plate of brownies when we first arrived. We did. Yeah. <laughs> we did. So I no, knew all So it's food. your daughter who talked to her. Somebody yeah. talked to her and I said, it must be Saren. And I got the message through David and he said, no, that was not the name. So it was your daughter. That's why her yeah. name is not Saren. Yeah. I forget yeah. her name. Yeah, Yeshim. Yeshim yes. Kane. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. makes perfect sense to me now. Yeah. She said, no, it wasn't Saren. It was some other name I don't know. And yeah. Okay. I said, I don't know who else it could be. So because now Yesh sense. Yeshim knows you. And she said, guess right. what? Uh, Emily, they rented the house right yeah. across from uh, Myra. Oh, Haley showed up early. Yeah. I, I, I got not lucky. Only are you not late, but you're early. Because we don't it's even camp. have a forum yet. Oh, okay. Well, well, that's here great. For the oh, that's funny. Now, mystery solved. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and there's Cody. Now we have three. Hi, Cody. He may not be there either. He's one of those people who got announced before he was there. Yes. It looks <laughs> like he's trying to connect audio. to the audio. Fun. I'm going to turn my camera off for one second, but I will be right back. Okay. okay. And there's Jim. So now we have a quorum. Yay. Perfect. Yes. So we'll wait for Pamela to turn her audio back on, and then we can get started. Hi, Jim. Hello. I did my homework. Did you do your homework? I did indeed. Okay, cool. Did you do your homework, Saren? No. No. I didn't I didn't realize I had a homework. Oh yeah, we had to, we we're all supposed to go check out the intersection. Oh so I no. found out stuff about the intersection and then I found out other stuff that I'm glad I did my homework. Wow. All right. So it looks like you have a quorum. We have Ian too now. So it's yes. good. And Elise did uh, send me a message that she might be joining late. She had a okay. doctor's appointment. So, okay, so, so I'll, can start. you can start. I will read over the chapter. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote me means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See the instructions in the agenda. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And anyway. it is 1134. And our technological means are working this time, so that's great. Okay, so we need to do a roll call. Um, so I'm Myra Ross. I'm here. Saren, are you here? Yes, I am. Jim, James Crudenier, are you here? That's, I am here indeed. Perfect. Ian, are you here? Yes, I'm here. And Cody, are you here? Here. Perfect. Okay. Um, I didn't miss anybody, right? Right. Because Elise isn't here and we're down one. All right. So I know that we are in sort of limbo about what our formal status is, because apparently the DAAC has not yet been dissolved and the Amherst Disability Commission has not yet been formed. So do you know anything about any of that, Pamela? I uh, do indeed. So uh, I uh, reached out to Athena to ask where we were in the process and to the town manager, and he has drafted the 
committee charge. That's the next step will be for the committee charge to be approved. Um, he had a conversation with Councillor uh, Mandy Jo Haneke. Re you'll remember at the meeting that you attended with the town council, she had some questions. Um, yeah, she wanted the, the legis she wanted the statute language. Right. So I, I believe that they have come to an agreement and the statute language is what's going to be in the final charge. So um, I'm I'm I have not confirmed this with um, with Athena, the um, town council's clerk. But um, now that that's been resolved, my um, assumption would be that within the next few town council meetings, um, all of this would be presented and it would be finalized. So it's, some steps have been made over the last month. Great. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Pamela about that? I do. Um, this okay. is Jim. Mm -hmm. Hi, Pamela. Um, Hello. Now, do, what do we know about the language in the charge that the town manager prepared? Because I know in this group, there were questions about the number of members and how the lower number would impact uh, the ability of current members to transition because we need a staff member from the town and we need, a, I believe, a, a family member of a person with a disability, those kinds of things when you go to the statutory language. So I was wondering whether his language reflects the concerns of this group. So uh, I would say the answer to that question is yes. I did ask the, uh, um, send an email to the town manager asking if I could share the draft uh, charge, but unfortunately that email went after he had gone on vacation. Um, and so he wasn't around to respond to it, but I do have a copy of the draft in front of me and it does not specify a number. It says a majority of the members shall be people with disabilities. One member shall be a member of the immediate family of a person with disability. Uh, one member shall be an elected or appointed official of the town. Members um, serve staggered three-year terms. So I, I believe that that does address the concerns that have been raised so that everyone who's currently on the board uh, are on the commission would um, committee would be able to stay. Um, and it would likely be that the membership would increase so that we would still have an odd number. Okay, so Pat, can yes. you bring to the council that concern? Um, because the reason that we had requested nine people, I don't know if you were here for this, but because of the language that Pamela just read, which comes from the statute, yeah. um, Pamela would become a member of the committee and one of our members has to be a family member of a person with a disability. And I don't know if one of our people would fit into that slot, but if they don't, we would have to, um, we would need two additional people in order to meet the statutory requirement and keep the current membership. And our concern was if we have seven members and one of them has to be a town employee and one of them has to be uh, a family member, then we would have only, uh, we would, and what was the other one? One has to be a town employee, one has to be a family member. If we only had seven, we would have five community members, whereas now we have seven which, okay. you know, disability, people with disabilities. So yep. we would be restricted to five. And now we the currently, as we are con currently constituted, we have seven. One of okay. them is not filled because uh, Marty left Amherst. Right. I have a so, question because, yeah. and I may have heard this incorrectly because my hearing aids are being repaired, but um, <laughs> I thought it was a family member of someone with a uh, disability, but also an elected official, for, not a town official. It could be elected yeah. or appointed. Yeah, it's either elected, oh, elected or, appointed or, appointed or appointed or appointed. I'm appointed. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's why we want nine, because we would have to give up two people with disabilities in order to meet the statutory requirement if we only had seven. We'd mm -hmm. have to give up two. Okay. So that's why we want nine. And that was not in Paul's original uh, 
charge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will do that. Thank you for the question, Jim. That is a very important question. Anybody I else? Have I, I have another question. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that Pamela would have voting privileges on this committee. I have no yes. problem with that. I'm just assuming that's the case. It says she's a voting member. Yeah. Yes. And so we need to know if she takes bribes. Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just want to remind everyone that this um, meeting is being recorded. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> but people know we're kidding. <laughs> that was, yes, the laughter is appropriate. We do not mean that. Okay. Um, okay, so we will be waiting to hear, um, and when we are reconstituted, we obviously have to have officers and all of that. So there's no point in voting for new people, even though it's the new fiscal year. Um, there's no point in voting for new people if we're going to be um, dissolved and then reconstituted as a commission. So that's why I didn't put that. Uh, you know, elections of leadership on the on the agenda. Okay. Um, any other announcements? So the uh, um, one announcement that I have is I wanted to introduce uh, Philip Avila to the uh, DAC. Um, so Philip is the new assistant DEI director. He's not new to Amherst because he was here for many years, and but is returning to Amherst after a short stint in um, his home state of California. And he started on uh, just last week. So I think this is day seven, actual work day for him. So he's only been on the job for about seven days, but he previously served as a member of the Human Rights um, Commission and as the uh, member of the CSSJC. So. So welcome, Philip. Wait, what's the CSSJC? Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Got it. Thank you. I'm very bad at acronyms, and the world revolves around acronyms these days. And I'm always wondering what people are talking about. So <laughs> all right, thank you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, any welcome, Philip. Thank, thank you. Feel free to speak when you when you have the urge. Um, right. we, don't, we don't you don't need to be a silent observer. All right. Um, okay. Um, do we I, have? I any do have another announcement, Myra. You do. Hey, if, go if, for it. Well, it's actually good news, I think, for most people. Um, you you may remember back in the spring, uh, this committee uh, learned about. Uh, Governor Healy's proposed cuts to the PCA program, which would eliminate people at 10 hours or less and, and all that kind of thing, uh, and how there was a lot of advocacy advocacy going on with the legislature. I'm not sure whether we've ever sent a, a letter to Governor Healy about that, but I know we discussed it. Any event, we, long we story did. short. Okay. Long story short, we uh, the legislature restored the funds and that made it into the final budget. And Governor Healy signed that budget without vetoing that line. So the PCA yeah. program is safe for now. Excellent. There was something else in there, actually, that I got from Senator Comerford. And I actually need to know more about it, but it has to do with nursing homes. Um, and I guess it has to do with financing. I guess it has to do with the financing of the, the state can no longer go after Medicaid uh, recipients to take uh, when they die to take from their estate, which is usually their family home. If there was one in their name, um, they were required in Massachusetts to pay uh for their nursing home care from the proceeds of the sale of the house, which meant that many people lost the family home. And that is a terrible thing for people who, that's all they have to inherit is the family home. And then they lost, didn't have a place to live, had no way of developing 
any kind of income or you know assets and so massachusetts was actually in the dark ages on this one compared to many other states and now they took away that and elise just came so that pertains to people with disabilities indirectly um because there's a lot of people in nursing homes who have disabilities. Um, well, and it, so... It's not just that, um, if I may add to that, yeah. um, and that is that what happens when a person who's received Medicaid services die, or what has happened anyway, when they die, then this, if it passed the age of 55, the Estate Recovery Bureau, or whatever it is they call it, would go in and see all the costs that that person had incurred with Medicaid. So they may never have gone into a nursing home, but let's say they used the PCA program for $600,000 worth from the age of 55 until they die. All those funds, uh, the state could make a move against the estate. So, so does so the new it, legislation pertain to PCAs as well as nursing homes? Absolutely. Yes. It, 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 and, it does. And any, okay. any, any kind of health care that Medicaid paid for, the state could move against that. Right. But when the fix that they just did in the budget, does the fix fix the, I, it says Medicaid. I don't know if it also says PCA in home expenditures. It, it wouldn't matter because anything that uh, the state pays for and they pay for, I think, what, half of PCA services at this point. Anything that the state pays for, it goes into this, <laughs> this long bill that they've kept records of. And so when, when a person who has been receiving Medicaid services and they're past the age of 55, when that person died, the state would then go and look at all that money. Wow. So I know, for example, in, in, in both uh, my case and in the case of Joe Tringali, uh, the state, you know, said, oh, wow. Well, I mean, they never went into nursing homes, but uh, the state said, oh, boy, you've sure racked up a lot of money, uh, <laughs> a lot of bills. We need to come back and get some of that stuff. So it would, it would be any kind of Medicaid reimbursed services. Okay. Okay, because I know however, there, are, however, there is federal is law that we are adhering to. What did you say, Sarah? Uh, it, that uh, bill has not passed yet because they added a couple of things together. So it has to be reviewed and then uh -huh. go to them. So that's where it is. Okay. But this is something Joe Comerford is strongly behind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. And maybe you guys can give us an update the next time because that was a, an extremely uh, big deal. All right. Um, there are. Are there any members of the public present who wish to speak? Yeah, if you're, uh, we do have members of the public in attendance. Okay, I will um, uh, bring you in as a panelist. Just one second. Okay, we have a guest. Um, if you would like to make a comment, please tell us who you are. And I guess you're supposed to tell us what precinct you live in, in town, and um, you can speak. You're okay. muted right now. Yeah. Indeed. Now I'm not, hopefully. That's Thank you. correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't muted at home. I could hear myself fine. <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I'll be quick. I'm, a, I'm Rob Evely. I'm a digital accessibility guy. And um, I actually don't live in Amherst, so I spend a lot of time in You came in, in April, right? You came to talk to us about the digital accessibility yeah. bill. Yep. Yeah, I thank just, you. I, okay, I, great. I brought it up, and, and I've been kind of keeping up with it. So I'm really just here quickly. I appreciate I see public comments are moved up to the top here. 
on the agenda. I believe that's new. Um, so it has varied. <laughs> okay, it's very. Um, all, all, all I want to do is check in just to 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 see if um, is that we all knew that the Mass Office on Disability had done a a, a comply a new you know ADA and digital accessibility event about a a month ago on July 11th, and it's up on YouTube. And I'm just making sure we're all aware of that because no, it's, uh, I was not aware of it. Okay, so I can I I can chat right? Can sure. I chat? more I am not seeing chat here yeah I think that the chat function may be um, disabled however um, at, a, at least one member of the town staff our new communications director and I believe one member from IT attended that event um, perfect at the MOD so they are aware of it and um, I that can I can try to share the link with everyone on the on on the DAAC. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a question for Rob actually. So the Supreme Court decision about uh, executive uh, regulations does not pertain to this because this came through the Justice Department, and is are they going to? Is somebody going to say that these regulations are null and void? That is quite a question. As as a non-attorney, <laughs> um, I, I I don't have a response. Myra. I'm okay, sorry. but you have not heard that. Nobody I have has not said heard that. that. So people that. are proceeding as though you're going to have to sue somebody to object. Okay. I, I'm honestly, I, as, as a non-attorney, I wouldn't even want to touch it. I, 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 I don't, I don't know um, how to handle that question, honestly. Okay. Um, however, um, so, so, but I, I, yeah, I just wanted to share, and and again, I, um, I appreciate you just giving me a little time to share that, and I think this is exciting progress. Still, um, I know uh, the state is is clearly moving to. Uh, make digital environments more accessible and, and putting some resources behind it. So um, that that's it. So I, I, I am actually going to uh, leave this call and join they, the State Digital Accessibility uh, and Equity Board now has four new working groups and uh -huh. um, and they've got those schedules up on the their website and I plan to attend their noon meeting on new policy initiatives. So Fabulous. I'm going to go Thank join that. Much. Okay, so thank, thank you all. And thank you for bringing that thank to you. us, and uh, we're going to need to talk about that at some point. Thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah, and it's great to hear you had some folks attend, so that's super. Um, though, it, you know, again, it's captured on Matt's Office on Disabilities YouTube you know, channel or page. So, all righty. Fabulous. Thank you so Thanks. much. I appreciate you. your coming. Thanks. Bye. We do. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else from the public? There is not. There is not. So, okay, then we can move on to the van. Hello, Haley. Thank you for coming to our meeting. Yeah, thank you for having me. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, so I'll tell you what um, what prompted this, although we uh, a larger discussion is certainly fine. Mm -hmm. When the people from the, um, I guess, conservation you can help me with this Pamela when they came to make the presentation about the accessible uh, work that they're doing to make pathways and stuff at um, Hickory Ridge um, and it sounds like what they're doing is fabulous because you're going to eventually be able to use a wheelchair um, from the uh, Had East Hadley Road to Pomeroy Lane and go on the little path that they made, the three quarter of a mile path and all the rest of that. So what's going to be there for accessibility is great. The problem is that getting to, um, getting to the Pomeroy Lane entrance, which is where the parking lot is, there is no bus that goes there and there isn't a way to get there um uh with um you know accessibly 
from anything. So the only way you could go is if you were going to take a PVTA van and go there. And that means you're going to sit and wait for the van and all kinds of stuff like that, because they don't have a for sure time that they show up and all the rest of that. So someone suggested that we talk to you about having the van, the silver van that you run, mm -hmm. um, have some regularly scheduled um, connection to that resource that the town has created, because otherwise all the accessibility is wasted on people who don't have their own transportation. Right. So okay. that's that's why we wanted you to come. Um, does anybody want to correct anything I said before Haley um, talks about the van and how it works? I think you covered it. Okay. All right. So that's, anyway, that's the topic we wanted to bring up for discussion is can we somehow get the town to connect its silver van service with the town's uh, uh, conservation area at Hickory Ridge, because there's no other way to get there if you don't have your own transportation. So let me just start by saying that the silver shuttle is available to any Amherst resident age 60 or older. Um, and it's a demand response vehicle. So right now we only operate Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays um, from about nine to three. Folks call in, they say, I wanna go X, we take them X, we bring them home. We do um, prioritize rides based on kind of needs. So our highest priority is medical appointments. And I would say probably 60% of our overall rides are for medical appointments. Um, to add a fixed route, like you're saying, I don't have the resources as in I don't have the, the drivers to make that happen. Um, so I, I couldn't say for sure, yeah, I can get you there, you know, every Monday or whatever, um, but folks can call our office and if we are available to fit you into the schedule, we can definitely take you to Hickory Ridge. Um, so you can do it that way. Or as you said, you can um, use the PDTA which may not be the, the quickest route, no. but it is not. You can't um, use PPTA. Yeah. I know that people have to wait a long time, which can be frustrating. Um, but really, it's just a matter of I don't have the additional drivers at the moment. Um, I can let you know, though, that thanks to PVTA, we will be able to hire additional drivers to um, expand our service to Monday through Friday. And hopefully with that, um, you know, folks will have more opportunities to take advantage of the shuttle. So um, what kind of lead time do you require for the reservation? It's long. Um, as, as soon as possible, really. Um, you can call the day before, but we can't guarantee that we're going to have availability. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much our driver is on the road the entire duration of his shift. He very rarely has breaks. So if you can book in advance, that's the best way to do it. Um, and then otherwise our staff can kind of let you know what we do have open. Um, so maybe it's not the specific day you wanted, we might be able to say to you, oh, well, you know, next to, uh, next Wednesday we can open. The problem with going to a, re a recreation area is it's weather dependent, whereas going to a doctor's appointment is not. Um, but, you know, if you, you can't say, I want to go next Wednesday because the probability is that there'll be you know, the, the potential is that there are some weather issues. So um, that's why we were hoping that it could be something that people could count on. And then if it's raining, it's not going to happen. But um, it's just the town set up this recreation area. And it would be really good if people, I mean, they 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 got money to make it accessible. Um, and it's not accessible to people who can't get there. You can't um, be spontaneous either, you know? You have to schedule something like that in advance, yeah. Yeah, and for, you know, a lot of older adults, that it's the same feeling where they can't be as spontaneous if they're not driving themselves around. Um, but then I think if you took a poll of other senior centers in Hampshire County, it's, it's a very similar setup where we do prioritize medical appointments. Um, and unfortunately for us, we right now don't have the capacity to really offer that kind of robust service. Um, but we are slowly working our way there, um, but it probably okay. will take more time than folks want. 
Well, we were hoping just to put it in your thinking cap um, sure. because it is a town resource. It's not a private resource. And it is funded with public money that was um, that was collected or that was received because of the interest in disability access. So it's a little bit different from going to the mall or, you know, which is private and certainly people want to do it. But we were just hoping that the town would be able to connect its resources um, because right. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah. now, so the, the senior van, you don't, so people can call up and they say, I need a doctor's, I need to get to X doctor next Tuesday at nine 30 and immediately they get a pickup time. Is that how that works? <laughs> No, well, and again, right now we don't operate on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but say if oh, right. I'm sorry. Okay. Monday, um, so okay. folks would okay. call and they would say, I have a doctor's appointment at nine, or let's just say for ease of argument, 10 o'clock. So then we would say to the person, okay, well, we're going to need to probably pick you up by 930 so that the driver has an opportunity to get there. And that's assuming that there are no other rides, because if there are additional rides, then that becomes a factor of if this person wants to be picked up in Northampton and at the same time someone needs to be picked up in Amherst, we can't possibly make that work with only one driver. Oh, boy. So yeah. you so do not provide you, service yeah. only to Amherst. It's not only within no. Amherst. All the information is in the senior spirit. We serve Amherst, um, Hadley, and Northampton. But unfortunately, again, because of resources, you know, the silver shuttle is just a suggested donation for a fare. You know, we don't even charge um you know, we, we have to be really judicious in how we use the vehicle because of the constraints that we're under. Hmm. Um, I, I have a quick question. Yeah. Is this mm -hmm. something uh, that maybe we could do some advocacy and try to work with the town to see if they can put some funds to support the silver van the days they are not operating, either Tuesdays or Thursdays, specifically providing uh, services to residents of Amherst, since it will be town's money, to uh, take them from their homes to the recreation areas. I will never say no for people to advocate for themselves. I, I will always encourage people to do that. And what I can say, because I know that this answer is, you know, this is probably not the conversation that you were hoping for, is that it, what might be possible on a smaller scale is to do like a one-off. Like if we planned, we'll take the van, you know, again, hypothetically, September 2nd. And then we know we're doing like a trip on that day and we could schedule something special um, because we only have the one driver and he works part-time. We do also have to kind of work around his schedule if we did something outside of our normal hours. That's, not very... That's actually a cool idea, as long as there's a rain date. Um, yeah, oh, totally. These days, the rain is just so ridiculous um, that yeah. you, know, you really can't count on very much. But that's that's a really sort of cool idea. So if you could set up, um, and you know, people aren't gonna go every month and you know, but if there could be like even one day a month that um, people would say, that's a day I can go and the rain date is X. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you could have a little picnic. Like, that could be a really nice one-off until we can get to a point where we have the infrastructure to make it more regular. So, that would be little... great. So, Haley, getting back to my, uh, the, uh, my idea, is there any way that whether it is a paid driver or a volunteer driver, because I work with the Amherst neighbors a lot. There are lots of volunteers they, people there that take people to their appointments. So if we can arrange something like that, could they have access to the van on specific days that you don't have them scheduled, like with the exception of Monday, Wednesday, or Friday? It would definitely need to be someone that the town had done a quarry check on, 
Right. Um, they would need to have some kind of official association, whether they were an Amherst Senior Center volunteer or staff. And the other thing I will say is that because the Silver Shuttle has a lift, there is some additional training that that person That's would right. need to That's take. That's right. Um, but it doesn't require a CDL. So anyone with a normal, irregular driver's license can drive it. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So it's great. Um, I'm hearing that you're open to uh, to making this possible for people uh, in the community. Yes. And you, um, so that's great. Um, you know, things start out. And we just wanted to put this on your radar because um, I guess a lot of people weren't too happy that after all is said and done there are several people on this committee who can't even get there. Um, so I totally understand that. Um, um, Myra, can I add one yeah. thing? Yeah. Um, if, and I, I think this might be Hadley rather than Amherst, but since the Silver Shuttle does go to Hadley, there's the um, Silvio Conte uh, accessible trail. Um, mm -hmm. It's really a lovely trail. It's a, a mile long accessible trail. Yeah. But again, the same issue. Uh, arises in terms of people who don't have their own transportation being able to get there. Um, and that's even further away from uh, any bus stops. Um, so if, yes. if that could be sort of in general consideration for this this um, discussion as well. Yeah, we could plan some field trips. Um, you know, and I again, I thank you guys for having me. I just want to kind of temper your expectations. I would love to say yes right off the bat, but Things take time to develop, so I, I didn't want to give you more hope. Um, but I definitely think it's doable to do some field trips, to set a rain date, and and go from there. That's great. Okay, so I have one more question. Um, let's say you want to go to Silvio Conte. Let's say you want to be there for an hour. It doesn't take an hour to do it, but let's say you want to be there for an hour. Um, what? Um, so if pe people say, pick me up at, please pick me up at 1130, um, do you, I mean, like with the paratransit, there are federal laws that govern how long people are allowed to wait and stuff like that. How does that work with you? So if you might, like we've had it be the case where someone might say, well, my appointment ends at 1145 and we have another pick, um, another pickup at this lane location at noon. We might, you know, ask the person, "Are you okay with waiting 15 minutes so that we can just get both of you at the same time?" It it helps us be able to serve more people that way. Um, but generally speaking, no one has had to wait. I would say probably more than like a half an hour, 45 minutes for a pickup. Um, there's a little bit of the same thing with PBTA, where if we're staggering rides, it's not. Yeah. It might not be like a taxi service, but we try to keep that down because, as you pointed out, the frustrating part of, about that dial a ride service is that you can sometimes be waiting for a very long time. So this service is funded entirely by the PVTA and covers Amherst Hadley in Northampton. Is that right? Um, no. So this service right now is covered the driver's salary half by the town and half through ARPA. And then the vehicle, like the gas, the maintenance, that's covered out of some donation accounts through the senior center. And then so any I'm, I'm going to say fees with my hands in quotes that we collect through our suggested donation that goes back into the service of the vehicle. Oh, okay. So when you said Amherst Hadley and Northampton, that's your choice to cover those three towns. Yeah, that's not a requirement. Because folks have so, no, because folks have so many appointments in Hadley or Northampton that, you know, for us, it didn't make sense to limit it to just Amherst because if my doctor's in Northampton, you know, that doesn't make sense. Interesting. Okay, so in many ways, you're duplicating what the PVTA does through the dial a ride service, even for people who are not ADA eligible, right? Mm -hmm. So just on a micro level for people who live in Amherst. Right, but they do that or too. 60 or older, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what the dial a ride service is. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. Does anyone have any additional um, uh, suggestions, questions for Haley? No. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah. And thank you thank for you your um, for your openness to to working with um, with us. I'm sure that there will be people that will contact you. I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything in the 2024. 
but maybe you will in the fall. So when it's not, um, so you long. know, and if if um if you want to send me some dates that you're thinking about, I'll see what I can work out with our driver. Maybe we can get something scheduled for like, you know, this will be nice to take the trails in September or October, early October. So, are they done yet? Oh, I guess that's a good question. I didn't really yeah, know that. I, I <laughs> oh, don't okay. Know that. Yeah, I don't know that, but uh, we can find out. The, okay. the Silvio Conte uh, trails are, are, yeah. are, oh, yeah. Have been no, done the for the other one, the Amherst one. Okay. Do you know okay, yet? Before the snow happens. Let me know. Okay, we'll find out. All right. Thank, thank you very much. We appreciate yeah, your coming. Take care. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay. okay, the next item has to do with our homework, right? Um, uh, which... so the, the next item is the Munson Library um, oh, MOD so, grant. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Chris, what happened with that? Do we know? So, yeah, so we do have an update. Chris was not able to join us, and I'm not, um, I'll just make this announcement in case you, um, you haven't heard that she's retiring. Yes. Yes, so she's yeah. retiring, but and she wasn't able to join us today, but she did um, send in um, some notes. So um, as you know, they applied for the MO, MOD grant for accessibility improvements for the Munson Library. Um, they will not be notified until sometime this fall whether they receive okay. the grant or not. Okay. Uh, Nate Malloy um, will check, uh, um, has checked on the MOD website and came across a notice that said, you know, please don't, they're not to contact MOD about the status. So they're simply waiting to hear. And as soon as Nate um, is um, is notified about the application, he will let us know. So we're in a wait and see um, position at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you for the update. Now, our homework, right? Um, we agreed that we would look at East Pleasant Street to see if we needed to request another beacon as we had in the grant application, but the grant application that was approved um, that we got money for preceded all the work that was done on Kendrick Park. And Kendrick Park has a beacon that's pretty close to where the one we were planning to have is. So the question is, did we need another beacon? And unfortunately, Guilford isn't here. Um, so did anybody do the homework? I did it an hour ago. I'm not proud of myself, but I did it an hour ago. <laughs> did anyone else do it? Yes, I did. OK. What did you think? Um. Well, I'm unfortunately I'm still hung up on um, whether there should be um, a, an accessible crosswalk at at the rotary itself, where the crosswalks currently exist, or um, further up or down or whatever we want to say, Triangle Street there um, a, across to Prey Street, which I I believe was the preferred option of this group. Am I completely off base on that one? uh originally so wait where are you you're on you're walking down triangle street toward the high school and you want to know if there's one to cross to prey street right correct there is one but it yeah. doesn't go to the crosswalk it goes it's sort of ridiculous um i don't know why yeah. they put it where they put it that's why we need guilford here because there's major problems over there. There's no sidewalk. They never fi finished it. You have to walk through the grass. What is there is broken in some places. But uh, and then the the beacon that they did put in isn't near the corner. So if you push the button on the beacon, you have to hightail it over to the corner, which you will not get to before the beacon the flashing stops. So I don't know why they put it there. But I was talking about actually crossing East Pleasant Street from the other end of Cray Street, Cray Street, where there was supposed to be another beacon that crossed East Pleasant so people could avoid the rotary at the south. And they did put one in for Kendrick Park, which is a little further down the road. But 
the, the request that we made that was approved preceded the Kendrick Park. So the question is, do we need to put that one in? There is a, uh, a poll, according to my husband, there is a poll that has wires in it that doesn't have a beacon on it. It looks like it's in process somehow, which is up much closer to the rotary at Triangle Street. Have you seen that? Boy, it's not registering with me. <laughs> it might be. When did you do the homework? Because we did it an hour ago. But if you did it two weeks ago, you might not have seen it because it might not have been there. Uh, you know, I can't. I did it a few weeks back, and then I did a quick run through last week. But I, I wasn't looking for that specifically. I mean, I, I had approached this with the idea that the Chestnut Court folks, you know, should they want to uh, go downtown by foot or chair? Uh, that they'd want a, a safe route uh, and, yeah. and a practical route. Uh, and that still strikes me as either at the Rotary or very, very close to the Rotary, uh, because otherwise, you know, you go up to Prey Street, as you said. I mean, there's no sidewalk there. If you get across to uh, Prey Street and all those offices in there, it's, it's a ridiculous, uh, I won't say labyrinth, but it's not easy to navigate. And it takes you With well With all those driveways and parking lots. Yes, yes, there is no exactly. continuous there is no continuous sidewalk and you cannot cross the street to the other side of Prey Street because there isn't even a sidewalk at all. Absolutely. So as as to, you know, looking at East Pleasant Street and getting over to Kendrick Park, it seems to be a relatively simple thing. There's a couple of crosswalks there, actually. Yes. Uh, and I, I think there should be uh, enhanced access at at one of those, uh, at least. And that and there, strikes me as straightforward and a good there thing is to a do. beacon right there. I, I give Guilford an A on the, the Kendrick Park setup. I pushed the button. I was able to find it. Does it make it, you know, it, it chirps or beeps or whatever you want to call it. You go, you know, the cars did stop immediately. You go oh, okay. across the street. You can Great. hear where the other beacon is. That's the one that goes to Kendrick Park. And my opinion is we don't need one only a little way up where Prey Street comes out because it's pretty close. But the other, where you're talking about is still a disaster. Yes. Um, um, so I, there is a poll, a half of a poll um, that David said looks like they're planning to do something with it. That's at the confluence of Triangle and East Pleasant. But that's not going to help people coming from Chestnut Court, who, or at least as far as what my husband said, you have to go through the rotary. You have to go on the islands. You know, you have to cross to the islands. He said a person in a wheelchair who could see it can do it um, because he said that the, the crosses are small um, and getting onto there is where there has to be a beacon to get. There has to yeah. be something coming from the north. Um, a blind person or a visually impaired person is still not going to be able to do it. Yeah, but if you I, can I, see I, where you need to go in your chair, it looked to him like you could do it if you could get across. The getting across is impossible. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the other thing I would note here uh, is that I've seen people in chairs and people with mobility impairments uh, you know, they'll take the shortest route. <laughs> uh, not everyone, but I, I've seen people, uh, a very elderly gentleman with a cane cross Bay Road. Um, uh, just, <laughs> I mean, you know, holy smoke. But as far as he was concerned, he was going to get across the road. And, you know, I guess nine times out of 10, it works out. Um, you know, we also have to recognize... I guess that, you know, we have to recognize that people at Chestnut Court are, are probably going to take the shortest feasible route, not necessarily a shortcut, but the shortest feasible route. And I think we have to try and integrate that preference, if we can integrate that preference with any changes we would make there. I don't know if I've made sense, but that's probably all I can well, say. It, uh, I mean, it seems like there are two different needs. The, the short, you know, the shortest possible that other people would do uh, absolutely has to be doable. And also that one isn't doable for people like Elise and me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I think we need to have 
maybe a field trip with Guilford because that south side of Triangle Street toward the high school is just ridiculous. I yes. don't know why he thinks that that is useful. I mean, it doesn't, you have to walk on the grass. Um, you have to walk on where they didn't put anything. There's no grass, just a hole. It's not like a hole you could kill yourself in if you're walking, but you certainly can't take a wheelchair through it. Yep. Um, and so I, I don't know. That was a big disappointment. But the original question for the homework assignment, I think he did very well, and we do not need another beacon right there. But the one that's up by Triangle Street that looks like it's half in, we do need, but that's not all we need. So maybe Guilford needs to, we need to get Guilford at our next meeting. Who okay. is, who's hair, whose hand is up? It, is it practical for us to meet Guilford there for that meeting? I mean, one of the things that happens, for me at least, maybe not the rest of you guys, but for me at least, um, I get lost after a little while. You know, he's got this map and it, you're looking at the map and you're trying to imagine what exactly is going on. And he may be running into the same problem of what exactly are these guys talking about. So, uh, you know, I don't know how feasible that is for us as a group, but okay. I'm wondering if that might be a good idea. An interesting question. Either through the regular meeting time or we could just arrange a time those of us who are interested could arrange a time and all meet with Guilford and show him. I mean, it, you know, you don't need a more than a kindergarten degree to see that the south side of uh, Triangle Street does not work. What you're talking about with getting there from the north, from Chestnut Court, is much more complicated. And I don't know how anybody figures that out without being there. You're right. So, uh, Myra, it's Pamela. I yeah. am out of the office on um, Thursday and Friday of this week. I'm in next week and then out for the last week in August. Okay. But um, next week, I will um, see if I can reach out to Guilford. I don't know what his schedule is like. Of course, it's the end of summer. A lot of folks are taking vacation. Yeah. Um, to see if there is a possibility that uh, a small group might be able to meet with him at that location. And um, I'm, I'm thinking perhaps a small group as opposed to the entire uh, uh, DAC because of the open meeting laws. So, and I, yeah. I, I mean, you probably, I mean, there probably would not be a violation of the open meeting laws because you wouldn't be necessarily, you know, deliberating and making a decision, but it. Um, I know that we won't run a front of that if it's a small group that's meeting. We, we have to have three or fewer. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, because the quorum is still four. Okay. So we have to have three or fewer. Um, who, I'm volunteering Jim. <laughs> who besides Jim Here, would like to do this? If the day and time works, I will be there. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, who else might be interested? Um, I'm just thinking about Elise. Are you interested because the way um, you cross is very different than the way I cross or the way Jim crosses? Well, uh, yeah, I just I'm really having a problem visually picturing where this place is. So I would need to meet somebody and go with, I, I have no idea how to get to this place. I just, I'm, I'm very directionally challenged that oh, way. Oh, you just, you're going to walk up from the church, from the, um. Which church? I'm, uh, I'm just. I'm wrong. Up from, like, you know where the post office is? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to continue going on that sidewalk. On until, what sidewalk? Well, no. on the, on the North Pleasant, East Pleasant sidewalk all right i have a very unique direction deficit okay whereas okay. i really north south all that stuff okay i just don't do i really need to go with somebody all right, right. well i think go we with can go, can I, maybe david and i can pick you up and we can okay uh, we can go because all right 
it's we're talking about getting to and through the new the new the rotary I, that's there that's i understand the that it's just okay. getting to the location i got it okay i don't picture well um directions i really need i really yeah okay uh, all right all right then so, i'll do it if i can go with somebody okay yeah that's good because i think between the three okay. of us we would give three different kinds of input that might be very confusing Okay. But they made this rotary and they're going to have to make it possible for people to cross, the, you know, to get to town yeah. from, you know, they took away the way that you used to do it, which was there was a light. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That, and that's exactly the problem, because it was a perfectly functional crosswalk for persons with disabilities with that yeah. traffic light. And and I don't even I know there are places that could benefit from rotaries, but I didn't even see that as a particular problem. But anyway, what's done is done. So now we have to try and figure out a way yep. to restore that access on, on top of a design that isn't favorable to it. Correct. Well put. So, okay, the three of us need to meet with Guilford, and perhaps um, you can facilitate that, Pamela. It'll be in September, I'm sure. Okay. So, yeah, um, so I will um, reach out to Guilford and ask okay. him to provide some dates and times when he would be able to meet the three of you okay. at that location and um, Perfect. try Thanks. to schedule that. Okay. Okay. Because uh, I do give him okay. an A for what he did for at, at, at uh, Kendrick Park. That actually really works. Um, I just did it today and I'm like, wow, that's great. But the rest of it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and we already talked about the commission. So Myra, uh, I'm gonna interrupt for a second. Um, um uh, Councillor DeAngelis has her hand raised. Oh, go for it, Pat. You're muted, Pat. Yeah, sorry. I'd be interested in attending if I could make any of the dates. So if I could and be sure. included, and I could give Elise a ride if that was necessary. Okay, that's great. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I know I could walk there, but I wouldn't know the first direction of how to do it. We'll figure it out. Okay. okay. No, that's great. I think it's important for for. Thank you for offering. Okay. I, that's great. Yeah, okay. I live close to town, so it can be feasible. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we already talked about the committee, uh, the commission, and we'll, we're waiting to hear from the town, um, from Athena or from the town manager. So we right, we've already covered that. And now we're sort of up to the new business. And Ian had something he wanted to bring to our attention. Um, do we discuss the Northampton COD July? Oh, no, no, we didn't. didn't. So sorry. Okay. Did anybody go to that? No, I went to a little no. bit of it. Um, they set up something which had a lot of presentations um, from a lot of people that do various kinds of things for, uh, you know, the from including the the uh, the uh, oh come on, you know, the recreation group, and I can't think of the name. They do incredibly good stuff, um, and they had all kinds of possibilities of things. And I was hoping that they would come up with a recording of it. Um, and I, I don't know, I went to a little bit of it, but I just, it wasn't, a, it was unfortunately at a time that I wasn't available. And apparently most of you weren't either, but they put some really good work into setting it up. Um, they had a bunch of presentations. They were brief. Then they had a question period at the end. Maybe there were 10 presentations, maybe even more. Um, and I would love to find out if we could get a recording of it. Um, so that would be useful. And um, are you in connection with, I think his name is Keith. Is that his name? Uh, I uh, can ask if there is a recording. I can reach out. It is, I think, um, Keith Benoit. Yeah. Benoit, that's his name. OK. Yeah. Um, but if there was, yeah, I, I think they did really good work. And it would be cool to watch and see if any of it would inform anything that we would want to do or just give us information. Okay, uh, now we can go to Ian's topic that he wanted to bring to us. Um, thanks, Myra. So I um, had meant to email uh, Myra and, and Pamela last week to get this on the agenda, but um, forgot to press send. Um, so it's on the uh, business not anticipated, um, but 
I have been increasingly <laughs> concerned uh, over the past weeks and months of uh, mask ban or anti-mask legislation um, that's gone into effect. Uh, it's been proposed in places like uh, North Carolina, uh, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, um, and most recently did get passed in um, Nassau County. Um, there are exemptions for um, health and religious reasons, but uh, uh, police often use what will use their uh, the police aren't really uh, uh, adequate judges of um, health and religious issues and and we'll use such rules to target um black and brown and, and disabled people um so i have had an initial meeting with pat um about trying to get a, a proactive policy in town and and i have a, a meeting scheduled with uh representative lindsey sabadosa coming up at the end of the month um to start legislation on the statewide level of um being proactive in not letting mask bans go into effect in Massachusetts um, uh, because there's, as far as I, I can tell, there's no reason for a mask ban, especially as COVID is, is surging and other um, uh, health issues continue to arise. Um, so my, I guess my ask for the DAAC was to, um, while, while I don't have language uh, about it yet uh, uh, just sort of general support for um working on on this policy with with that both at the town level and um with representative Sa sabadosa at the, at the state legislative level okay anybody have any comments questions yeah um elise here i was just can you clarify what you're all you're, you're all muffled we can't hear you. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. You're, you're back now. Okay. Okay. Can I? I'm. I'm really. This is a stupid question, but did you say mask ban? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What? Can you tell me more about what that? I'm just out of the loop here. Sure. So these. This. Um. There have been uh, these a number of um uh bans proposed at at um varying legislative levels um both statewide and city uh city or municipality wide or in in Nassau County in um I think that's Long Island uh to ban them to to ban the usage of of masks um and it's it holy crap sorry <laughs> yeah that's that's sort of my reaction as well yeah um, uh uh people are still getting covid right and left i don't think that covid masks are included in this legislation Oh, okay. Um, they are in North Carolina, I'm sure. When they did it in the South, they did it for different reasons. I don't know what's going on with Nassau County, where I grew up, but um, I have to say that when I oh, read the when I read the bill, it there it it's not allowed to pertain to religious masks, and it's not allowed to pertain to health masks, which is anything you would wear for COVID. Um, so it's not clear to me what it does pertain to. Probably yeah. hoodies that are pulled too close around your eyes, you know, and so, you know, like that kind of obscure your face because you uh, oh. don't want anyone to see. But I, I mean, as okay, far that's as what I, I was read, trying to find so, out. Yeah. I read the Nassau County thing. It did say doesn't pertain to health and it doesn't pertain to religion. And it's Although in in the in the hearing in in Nassau County um, that uh, about the issue, uh, people who were there, uh, immunocompromised people who were there and and wearing masks, were getting a lot of harassment from from anti mask people. Um, so w while there is the language that it's not uh, health related, it, it it is sort of specifically targeted around people who want to uh pretend that covid no longer exists okay so if people are doing that for political reasons uh that i mean that's different i mean why do you need a mask ban at all but um and why are you working with lindsay sabadosa she is not our representative um mostly just because i have a, a a closer working relationship with her than with mindy dom um, but i'll reach out with mindy to mindy as well 
Okay, because if the Amherst okay. Disability Committee is going to do anything with it, I mean, it would seem sort of appropriate for us to work with Mindy because she's our rep. All right. Well, um, I'm glad I got some clarification. Thanks. Um, okay. Does anyone else have any uh, questions or? Yeah, it, it, it just strikes me at this point uh, without knowing, you know, a, you know, Ian's conversations with with Lindsay and and possible involvement with Mindy and and all that. I mean, we I, it just strikes me that we don't know enough at this point as a committee. Maybe as individuals we do, but as a committee, it strikes me that we really can't say anything at this point on, on anything specific. I, that's what I think. I would agree. Actually, uh, we don't have any specific language proposed. Um, I mean, in principle there can't be a mask ban that has anything to do with health. Um, and that's the purview of this group as a disability uh, committee. So if people are using the mask bans to make political statements about COVID, um, and if that's the danger, I mean, we, I, I don't see how you need, why you need a mask ban at all, but, in and of itself, if it says there can't be any that it that it that it doesn't pertain to health, if it says it doesn't pertain to health, it doesn't pertain to health. Um, so I think Jim is right. We would need much more information about what uh, we what Massachusetts should do, if anything. Do we need to have legislation that prohibits a ma mask bans or in Massachusetts, or do we just need not to have legislation? Prohibiting mask bans. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? That makes sense. And and I can come back um, after meeting with Lindsay and, and potentially Mindy with, with more concrete language. Yeah, we need to know more. I, yeah. yeah. Is this Lindy's idea, Lindsay's idea, or is this your idea? Uh, my idea. Okay. Because... There's something in me that says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and nothing is broke in Massachusetts, so we don't need to fix it. If we have people in Massachusetts talking about mask bans, then we need to fix it. Right. Um, but I don't know that they do legislation prohibiting mask bans. I don't know. But that would be something you could find out. L Nassau County... Um, has a certainly a reactionary contingent. Nassau County is not a heavily blue county. Um, it wasn't when I grew up in it. Parts of it are, but mostly it isn't. And and uh, it, it you know I I can see this coming out of Nassau County and being abused by uh, people who want to make a political statement, but. Um, I'm. I don't know that that's going to be an issue here. Although there are um, proposed mask bans in New York City and Chicago and L.A. that are all um, uh, blue blue cities, as as you say, they're proposed. That doesn't mean they'll go anywhere. Right. I mean, anybody can propose something. The question is, is it going to be approved, and is there any danger it's going to be approved? And I don't see any, you know, nobody reasonable would say from a public health standpoint in New York City that masks for, you know, medical reasons. I mean, people would get sick. That's just idiotic. And I don't think that's what's going on in New York City. People make proposals. I mean, there are book ban proposals all over the place. It doesn't mean that people are banning them. Actually, I think Governor Hochul was the one who initiated conversation about that in the state and, and NYC. Uh, about the mask ban? Which yeah, is kind of disturbing, but um, you know, at the same time, I think uh, Myra's point is well taken that that we want to look at what's going on in Massachusetts, and you know, weigh the pluses and minuses of you know, no ban. You know, I, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, that's certainly a worthy consideration here. Fortunately for us, right now, Matt. Well, speaking for myself and nobody else on this committee or the town, uh, I'm happy that this is such a blue state. Things change. Um, we yep. can't rely on that. So, you yep. know, it's, it's a good thing to look at this, no question. Yep. 
All right, you can, um, I think it's okay for you to, uh, pre I mean, of course it's okay. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I think this committee or commission or whatever we are can't make any uh, decisions about anything that we don't know even how, that we don't even have proposals for. That makes sense. So on your own, sure, go for it and see what they say. I mean, they may have discussed this in the legislature. I don't know. Um, and I'll come back further with more concrete language um, in, in the future. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, does anybody else have anything that didn't come up uh, that wasn't on the agenda? I was just wondering, because I think we talked about it last time, about following up. Did And I know it's summer, et cetera, et cetera. But anything, any new thing about town hall access? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't have any news on uh, town hall access. Um, there was, um, now, well, I, I won't speak for Councillor DeAngelis. I'll let her speak for herself. But there was some communication between uh, between her and the town manager. So, Yeah, you want to talk to us about that, Pat? Sorry, I forget to unmute myself. Um, I uh, reached out, Ian had sent me some minutes, and I reached out with a rather uh, aggressive email about um, the issue, but I had, um, I did not know that you had already met with Chris Bestrup and folks, uh, but what he said when, when he and I talked after I sent the email, what he said was, oh, there were several follow-up issues. I will get to the staff people who uh, were supposed to follow up. And you have heard nothing, and neither have I. So I will reach out again for those, you know, for follow up. Last we heard was that they were going to think about engaging some, and I don't remember the name of it, consultant firm to come in. And it was going to be something like thirty-four thousand wow. dollars, which they said that they had um, to pay someone to come in and do an assessment of what could be done to make an entrance of town hall completely accessible. And we had to do that because Jeff Dugan from MOD basically recused himself from any involvement with this because he had been involved in the decision. Uh, I don't know if he's an ex officio or a voting member of the, of the, um, of the MAAB, mm -hmm. but he said that he could not participate in this as a consultant or an advocate because he'd been involved in the decision the decision, of course, which was made without full information. Um, and so I don't know where they are because they said they were going to be uh, engaging someone. Um, so the fact that Paul's going to follow up with them is probably good. Um, but we, you know, uh, the problem was, the problem was that Pamela was never in the loop as the ADA coordinator, the materials were given to the wrong person, yep. um, given to Chris Brestrup. Right, and nothing um, happened with it. Right, and I don't, I don't know if she knew what, I don't know if she knew what she was supposed to do with them because she's not in that loop. Well, that no was more. around the appeal action. That, you know, that, they, that No, they wouldn't let us appeal because it was too late. Right, the other thing that, Concerns me a little bit is that Paul, one of the, his responses to me was, oh, you know, we won an award for accessibility. Uh, and that might have been true when it was first built, but I, there's certainly been shifting of that makes it difficult to go into either side door and there's no accessibility for the front door and the back door is whatever. So I don't know. I don't know. I will reach out. Yeah. Well, I guess that response would sort of concern me because it was very clear from the planners 
who came to our meeting before Marty left the committee. Um, the planners who came to the meeting were well aware that that the that getting in to town hall is not accessible. Once you are in town hall, right. it yes. is accessible. But getting into town hall and and they were well aware of the mistake that was made. Um, and you know, it just it shouldn't have happened that way. And they talked about how to rectify it. They were going to hire uh, somebody to be a consultant about how it could be done. And that's where we need to find out. We need to find out where they are with that. If Since Chris is retiring, Rob was there, right? Pamela, who was at that meeting? Yes, Rob was there. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and he basically said, and I can't remember the year that the renovations were done, 97 or 98, he said we were out of compliance at that point. And, and that was the point when things went off the rails. Right. So, so this is God it. knows how they got an access award or accessibility award, but uh, it right. doesn't work. But that's not an acceptable response from the manager at this no. point, for sure. That is not. I'm going to have to tone down how I um, <laughs> reach out. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Well, and I will reach is... out. Go ahead and laugh, Pamela, but you know me well. <laughs> you know, toning down only gets you so far, Pat. I know, okay. but um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so it's Rob Moore who, who knows, I think, and Chris, but she's retiring, but he may know where the status of this project is. He sh he is the one who should know. Okay. That's what I think. What do you think, Jim? I think that makes sense. Okay. Okay. All right. So September 10. Oh, that's, that's a big day. That's a day of the debate. Um, September 10 is the ne is the second Tuesday in September. And I wonder if we'll be able to meet with Guilford before then. Uh, um, I will definitely reach out to him. But before we finalize and set the date, can we um, ask if everyone had or if anyone had a chance to read in the minutes? Although I know they were quite lengthy. Well, they, yeah. mine got cut off. Did anybody else get all of them? I got all of them. I got them. Yeah. Mine ended in the middle of the Guilford talking in the middle of a sentence. So you got you got more of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, huh. all right. Um, do people feel like they want to approve the minutes? Since I only saw a tiny piece of them. I, um, I have one comment about the minutes. Go ahead. Um it is exactly the whole recording yep so is there any way it could be much much shorter because i really didn't have the time to read through all seven pages or eight pages of it it will be um, much shorter going forward so we've had um, we meaning the dei and the crest department have have had a senior volunteer working with us for the last um, I think actually now close to six months. And so she has been very diligently um, doing all of the minutes and recording every word spoken, even though that wasn't necessary. But I guarantee you when it, when they come back to me, which they will with this meeting, I, I will be <laughs> summarizing and, and doing high points. So yeah, they oh, will yeah. get shorter. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's good. Okay, so do we have a motion regarding minutes from July 11? Uh, July 9, I'm sorry. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second, Elise. Okay, all right. So um, do people want to vote on these minutes? Yeah. Okay. All right. We can, I mean, we can vote on them. I didn't get, I got like two pages and the rest didn't come. I don't know why. Um, all right. So 
All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 I think I heard everyone. All right. Okay. And anyone opposed? No. Okay. So we have Myra, minutes. This is Ian. Yeah. I'm just going to abstain because I haven't had a chance to read them. Okay. So Ian's abstaining. Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, I mean, it's verbatim, so I guess I'm not going to abstain. But uh, they're, they're very verbatim minutes are very difficult and I'm yeah so thank you who is ever going to do this uh, it, it's really helpful okay so September 10 um, and I guess I have a question if we're not able to meet with Guilford before then because that's pretty early in September it's like a week after Labor Day um, does anybody feel like we could meet on the 17th instead if we can't get the meeting with Guilford? Let me get my calendar. Ugh. I'm just wondering because it would be good if we could talk about all of this before the winter when they can't do anything. Uh. That's a Tuesday. I can't. Oh. I can do it. Does anyone have any reason that they would not be able to do the 17th instead of the 10th? Because I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to meet with Guilford before that, given that, well, I mean, if it, if it, uh, uh Councillor DeAngelis has her hand raised. Okay. Councillor yeah. DeAngelis. Yeah, I would not be able to be there on the 17th, but I could check in and get an update. Okay, and you, but you could be there on the 10th. I can be there on the 10th. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if we can get together with Guilford the week before. And I um, I can talk to you, Pamela, about my schedule. Because I'd really like to be there, Annalise and Jim. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone has a very good rest of August. And hopefully it won't be 90 degrees again. Hopefully we'll have just beautiful days from now on. Well, today certainly is. And when it yeah. rains, it only rains at night, just like in Camelot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or stay in Spain. Hey, everybody. What? Take care, everyone. We're joining at 1253. Okay. Even early. Perfect. So do, okay. do we need to move to adjourn? I'm just asking. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> you want to move? I move, we adjourn. <laughs> okay. Who's seconding it? I guess I, I will. Okay, <laughs> since you brought it up. All right. Um, does anybody <laughs> oppose adjournment? <laughs> Hearing no opposition, we're adjourned. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.